Hey, g'day Eve, welcome to the virtual tour. This is Braden from Pacific Toyota here in Cairns. Hey, like I said, just getting in on this uh, 2017 Mitsubishi Pajero Sport GLS here in front of me. Probably the best looking Pajero Sport I've seen in a very long time. Uh, this thing is just unreal, great service history and an absolute stack of gear on it as well. Uh, like I said, gonna take you through the whole car, any little scratches or marks I can find, the service history, the features, and uh, give you a really, really good suss through this thing in a bit of detail, because I know you're stuck at home. Uh, obviously, you know who we are, obviously Pacific Toyota here in Cairns. Uh, so we're lucky enough to have two massive pre-owned yards here. Um, we've got another one obviously at 77 Mulgrave Road. And of course, you can, across the road, you can see our spare parts, service drop-offs, and uh, Toyota and Lexus new car showrooms. But like I said, I'm currently here at 251 Mulgrave Road. Um, and yeah, like I said, gonna get stuck into it. Uh, I'll start from the very, very front here, uh, right from the very, very corner. So obviously we've got the genuine Iron Man bull bar on this one as well, with the light bar fitted in there too, all light up through your high beams. Uh, looks like a little bit of um, scuffing just underneath there and on the actual corner itself. But again, it is your bull bars. They are designed for four-wheel driving, so of course they're going to have some marks on them. That's what they're there for. So we've got those ones on the corners and a little bit just under here, a couple of light scuffings. If any of that sort of stuff is a concern for you, let me know. Can talk to management, uh, seeing as this is a white bulba. Can talk to management and see if we can maybe even get those touched up for you. And as we come around, so again, just a little bit of scuffing under this underside here and there as well. So that's just right underneath. So you don't actually really sort of notice it until you're up close and uh, and actually looking in that direction. But very, very tidy for the rest of the actual bulba there. Unreal sub on the front of this thing. I just love it. It's, uh, it's just such a good looking truck. As we come across the side here, so of course you've got your UHF radio over there too. I'll show you where all that is on the front uh, inside once we jump in. Uh, it looks like a tiny little sort of stone chip just there, right on that ridge. But otherwise pretty clean as we go across the rest of that bonnet. Again, just a tiny little sort of stone chip there and there. But nothing else to worry about besides that. And same, just a little one there as well. But again, like I said, it is a four-wheel drive. It's exactly what it's designed for. So uh, being the GLS, obviously we've got the uh, GLS factory uh, wheels on these ones, the alloys, so they look absolutely stunning. I was just trying to see if there's any gravel rash I can see, but it's looking pretty damn clean to me. Uh, we've of course got those um, the ultra ranks here as well. Stacks of tread left on these guys. Um, and you've got an absolute massive amount of um, suspension in here as well. So all, uh, all aftermarket as well. So you've got that lift and the suspension upgrade there too. So I'll just take you down here. So we've got those Unreal uh, sliders as well, the Elfin Engineering. So the orange checker plate, as long as the uh, steel rails here as well, and the black powder coat there too. And angled as well. So they're angled like that, so if you are doing any fall driving, it um, just makes it a bit easier with rocks or anything like that underneath you to, um, to bounce back off that car and protect the, uh, protect the panels there. So pretty clean through here. Too bad on the driver's door. So being the GLS, you've got your keyless entry on both front doors as well. So I've got the keys in my pocket. Push that one there. It's going to tuck those mirrors in and lock the car. Push it again, and they're going to open it back up for us. So I'll just show on the uh, inside of the driver's side here as well. Pretty clean through the inside. Not too bad at all. A little bit of scuffing just down the bottom here and there. But I'd say just from people jumping in and out of the car. It's a tiny bit of wear there, but again, it's the driver's side. It's the highest traffic area of the car. So just obviously from someone's hand sitting like that. We got the bedrock, uh, Mitsubishi Pajero bedrock, uh, mud floor mats through this one as well. So in the um, in the rubber ones as well. So the actual they're designed for Mitsubishi Pajeros, but they're an aftermarket one as well. So they're actually pretty expensive to be honest with you. Uh, but they do hook into the actual points down here, just like your Pajeros, and they are shape fitted too. Uh, but great for uh, for dirt and, and mud coming into the cars and things like that, and not tracking it through the carpet. So being the GLS again, so you've got the electric adjustable seats here for you as well. Adjustable one there. Looks like there might have been a slight repair in the past just in that seat, but that's already been done and, uh, and repaired for you. So nothing to worry about with that. Um, you've got your UHF over on this side here, so you can just turn it on and off with that once it's actually uh, got the car running, of course. And yeah, your microphone's there for you too. So we've got the um, dash mat across the top there too. Just show you quickly under there, so nothing to be concerned about. Any of that sort of stuff, we just leave in the car for you. Take across this rear door now. So pretty clean across this one. There, a little bit of water. We've had some pretty crazy rain at the moment. So again, just some light sort of scuffing there and there. But nothing too bad at all. So again, just a little chip there, just on the outside. So like any of those sort of ones, let me know. And if it is a worry for you, we can always talk about getting them touched up. If not, let me know. So you've got the um, argument separator here in the center. So what have we got? There we go. So you've got a couple holders in the middle. 
they pop down that goes back up adjustable seats here as well so they can fold right forward for you these ones can drop flat as well so you end up with a massive massive amount of flat space through the back um, you can use this one here and tie it up to the headrest itself too to stop this sort of moving around if you want to lead this up and use that extra space uh, I will show you the other side as well and I'll show you into the back how much space you actually get once they're down um, air conditioning through the middle rows here with the drop down handles and the solid ones on that one there and the same in the air conditioning in the third row that's the actual seat belt itself for this one so that just comes down you get the drop down handles in the uh, in the back there too the actual child middle child uh, restraint for the seats is just up there in the roof as well so everything's tucked up nice and neatly so if you don't want to use it it is out of the way and you're not tripping over um, seat belts and all that sort of thing so just down to that rear Mitsubishi GLS wheel again, looking very, very clean. Just a couple of little sort of scratches on that one, but nothing too bad at all. Stacks and stacks of tread lift on these guys. Again, you can see yourself just how clean that is through there. Sorry about the uh, the water. Like I said, it's been um, raining pretty hectic at the moment. I just had to give this a really good chamois. So uh, it looks like a tiny sort of, very light sort of scuff there. And a couple of little sort of stone chips on just on the corner. Pretty good as we go through the rest of it. You've course got your roof racks up the top as well. So the pro racks up there. So great if you want to put like a um, tents or solar panels or any of that sort of stuff up there as well. So a little bit of sort of grazing just there on the fadings on the um, on the plastics, but nothing too bad. Again, as you come around. So a couple of little luggage marks on the uh, those common ones that you get on that rear bumper. So a couple of little ones across there. Uh, we've got the Anderson plug on this one. Of course, your, uh, your seven pin flat in there too. For your tow ball, pop this one up for you. So, like I said, it is the seven seats, so you can actually pop these back up if you do want to use them. It simply connects up like that, headrest comes up, and those fold down and click into place, and that's it. So, really, really nice and easy if you do want that extra space through the back here, otherwise, they just simply drop straight back down like that. You get the seat belts that are tucked up there currently. Um, you should have your jack tools, everything's all tucked away in behind that wall for you tie down points here in through the back there too so if you do um, you know, have anything in the back you can actually tie them down through here a little accessory plug there as well for you and like I said so you've got the drop down handles air conditioning all through uh, all three rows which is just awesome right, very very neat setup like I said a little bit of scuffing and use there just those common areas when people are putting stuff in and out through the back there same with um, just up here so a little bit just like that just a little scuffing on the inside there but right, otherwise pretty good through the back looks like just a little scuff just again a bit of a scuff underneath there so I can't actually see it unless you sort of actually get right up close at the back here and underneath but a bit of a scuff there a small one there but again like I said just want to be as picky as we possibly can for you show you everything I can find um, fuels on this side here I'll show you what the release is for that once we jump inside as well down to that rear tire here so again a little bit of gravel rash a little bit of grazing but it is a full drive and apologies for the water through there. Right, pretty tidy, not too bad at all. Just the little ones there, same as the other side. So a child locks on both sides, just there and there. A little bit of scarf just on those entry points. And again, like I said, just a little bit of chipping down there on the uh, on the skirts. Like I said, you got these mats the whole way around as well, so they're just one single one that reaches right across. But I just like showing you under there as well, so you can see just how well that's been looked after. So the interior in here is pretty good. Um, I'll fold this one down for you as well, so you can just see this side too to compare it. So like I said, those seats will actually fold flat like that. These little ones actually fold up underneath like that to give you pretty much a flat, solid surface the whole way across. So that side there will do the exact same thing. So really, really neat setup. The uh, seat belts themselves will actually tuck into these too. So it gives you that whole amount of space if you do want it back there as well. Just a really, really neat setup. So again, you've got the keyless entry on both sides here. A little bit of scuffing just on the inside there. Not too bad. Same thing, just some white sort of stone chips just down the bottom. Or not even stone chips, I'd say. Like I said, it's just people catching their feet as they've gotten in and out. So electrical adjustment on both sides. So again, you've got your heights, front and back. And your backrest there as well. So being a GLS, you get all those features. A tiny sort of mark there. So all your books, all your service history, everything's all in this thing. This means uh, mechanically has been maintained so well. So it was a pr uh, previously a private owner down 
in looks like Melrose Park, so down Brisbane way. I'm just not going to show you that first page uh, with the customer's details because this is going to be uploaded to YouTube. But I'll just skip to this one, the service history. So awesome service history. These ones only got to be done every 12 months or 15,000 Ks. So originally 5,000, 2019, 18, 2019, 31 at 20. Um, again, 50,000 at September this year and then again through us at the start of this year. So when they come through, if they're due for a service or they're coming up or anything like that, we just get them done so that way everything's nice and fresh. So awesome service history there, been really, really well maintained, exactly what you want to see. I'll just take you through the rest of this one. Okay, as we come around, tiny little one there. And again, on those wheels, heaps of tread, awesome looking suspension in there, just looks so good. I love this thing, dead set. <laughs> I'm a big fan. That's uh, such a good looking truck. Alright, so come around. I'm going to jump inside the driver's side. Uh, we're going to get this fired up, show you a bit of the inside here too. So, push button start for this one. So, you've got your ignition just here on the driver's side. Two uh, keys. You've also got the keys, what it looks like for the roof racks up top. So, central locking on both of those as well. So, as long as these are in the car, we can start it up. So, I'm going to jump in here, foot on the brake, start it up, push that button there. Go. So currently 51,694 kilometers as it sits right now. That beeping was just letting me know that I haven't actually put my seatbelt on yet and we've started it up. Uh, but no engine lights or anything like that to be concerned about. Um, up on the actual steering wheel here. So we've got, of course, heaps of heaps of options here, but that give you a really, really simple layout at the same time. So on the left hand side here, we've got your sources or your radio controls through this side over here. So you can jump between um, your radio stations, AM, FM, Bluetooth, USB, uh, all that sort of stuff from here while you're driving. Um, again, those, those phone controls are all down here for you, so you can answer and hang your phones, use your MySpeak as well, uh, your voice command, sorry. Uh, any of the displays down this one are over the left hand side here. So cruise control up on the right, turn it on with that, set and reset from there. You can see it coming up on the digital display down the bottom. And of course, a little menu option here too. So your average fuels, uh, your kilometers, eco modes, all that sort of stuff is up here as well. So how long you got left to a service, all that sort of stuff is from the top here too. Being the GLS again, you get the paddle shift. So one this side, one this side. So you can go up the gears there, down the gears on the left. Uh, once you're in drive and you put, flick it across the sport, you can actually use those whenever you want. So if you uh, want to have a bit of fun with the car, if you're towing, if you're coming up to a big hill, if you're doing um, inclines, anything like that, where you just want control of those gears, you've got them right here at your fingertips. Um, the actual uh, wipers themselves are over the left-hand side here, so that's all pretty standard. Um, automatic settings for your headlights here, so currently they're set in automatic, there you go. So your parkers, headlights, uh, sorry, <laughs> parkers, headlights, high beams, and of course your blinkers are all there like normal, but you can flick that to automatic and they're gonna do their thing. So your headlights will just turn on and off as they need to. So rain, hail, shine, underground car parks, those headlights are gonna turn on and off. So uh, you can see UHF's now working there now that we've got the car running as well. So that's all uh, operated from the mic there. Mirror controls are just at the top, so that, um, like I said, when you lock and unlock the car, those mirrors fold in, but you've also got a button there to do it too. So you get the power fold just there from that little op operation. So four-wheel driving, car parks, you name it, wherever you want to tuck those in, you've got the button there too. Otherwise, your mirrors, your left side of the car, right side of the car are all controlled from there. Uh, traction controls there for you, those little parking sensors all around the car, um, so that, uh, the front and the back, so you can operate them from here, so you can turn that on and off from those if you don't like them. The light bar on the front's just that one there, so again, rigged up through your high beam, which is great. Um, you've got electric brakes on this one too, so red arc system, if you had $1,100 set up that right there. So again, your brake controller is controlled from that one as well. Uh, the windows, of course, are all electric over the right hand side here. Central locking's there and your window locks are there too, so pretty easy. All maintainable and controllable from the driver's side. Um, big touchscreen display up here. The apps button is going to bring you up an option to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So your navigation uh, through your phone can be basically projected up to this via the USB. Uh, is the whole idea of that. For the Androids, you're going to have to download an app. For the um, Apple, you can pretty much plug straight in. Uh, normal home button is going to bring you up to this menu here. So again, that same apps button. Your phone's there for your Bluetooth, text messages, all that sort of stuff. iPod, USBs, FM, AM, all that sort of things through there as well. Um, heaps of personalization stuff you can do in this car as well. Jump into the settings and have a good suss through them. Been to GLS again, so you've got all your uh, independent temperatures here. So again, driver side here, I can crank it right down if I'm uh, sweating, and you can crank it right up over this side here, whichever way you want. Um, it's totally independent from the left and the right hand side of the car. Uh, fan speed's there, you can shut it off to the rear if you don't like it. Great little one for the kids, but if any of those seats back there turn, take off their seat belts while you're driving, especially, this one's going to uh, illuminate and let you know exactly who's playing around. Hazard lights are there for you, rear diff locks there. For the four-wheel driving and that's that little rear uh, aircon button that i was saying about as well 
uh, as we come down. So chuck that into reverse. That's a little camera I showed you the back so you can see the rear bar and the tow bar right there in front of you. So really easy. So you never should actually make it real easy for backing up to trailers. And of course anything behind you, cars, walls, whatever, trees, uh, makes it real nice and easy to reverse up to. You can see the actual corners of the car there too. So absolute piece of cake there. Uh, as we come down, so electric handbrake on this guy, so full on the brake, push that one down to disengage it, pull it back up to engage, and you can see that light turn on and off as you need to. Uh, with the windows down, you can actually physically hear that engage, which is handy as well. Um, beautiful about the full drive side of this thing, so the uh, Mitsubishi Super Select gearbox here. So chuck the car into neutral whenever you want to flick between these ones. Currently we're in 2H, so normal driving around, we've got the rear wheel drive active. Flick it over 4H, you're going to see that engage at the top there, that 4H that flashes a few times. Once it stops flashing, it's engaged. Uh, this one here, we can actually drive around on the bitumen. Great for wet roads, uh, all that sort of thing, give you a bit of traction. Uh, and now drive to all four wheels while being able to drive on the road. No one else can really do full drive systems that let you drive on the road like that. It's is pretty special. Uh, once we go to 4H LC, so 4 high locks in, you've got to push it down to go into this one. So you'll see again, that's going to engage. Currently we're on gravel mode. So we can jump between mud, snow, sand, gravel, all those ones there are just from that little button there. So again, you can preset it so the car will personalize itself to, to be the most efficient in those areas. So just an unreal full drive setup here. Um, we push that down again and we're going to go to four high lock center, uh, sorry, four low lock center. So that's for the real crazy full wheel driving, uh, creek crossings, all that sort of stuff. Your traction control turns off and again, you can see that up the top there too. Again, with those four parts, the sand, rock, all that sort of stuff there too. So that's for um, creek crossings, beach runs, uh, gravel, you know, you know, where you want super high revs, but not a lot of speed. Um, to get out of that again, so stay in neutral that whole time, foot on the brake, and we just casually go back through them and let it do its thing. Wait till they stop blinking and go between them. So because of course you've got an electric system here doing it all, you just want to be patient and let it all engage. And beautiful. So now just like that, we're back at 2H. Um, so cup holders here. A little bit of storage there, heaps of storage in there. Um, up the top we got massive sunny holder in the top there. We got mirrors in there. Not this side. Drop down handles this side. Solid ones there. Uh, just an un unreal setup in this one. Sorry for the shaky cam, but like I said, just trying to get as much of this in as possible as we can. Uh, just an un unreal car. I absolutely love these things and the way they're set up. They're just very, very well done for full driving. So look, I'm going to jump out. I'm um, going to just quickly show you under the bonnet before we finish this video up for you. Going to go down. So we've got the uh, fuel release here. Like I said, it's over on the passenger side there. The actual bonnet release is tucked up just under. So that beeping's just letting us know that I've actually got those keys in my hand and I've still got the car running just so you don't forget the keys. And there you go. So that's your little... Mitsubishi common rail motor. Uh, we've got two, two dual batteries under there, which is great as well. So if you want to run fridges or anything like that, you've got a massive amount of electrical power under there as well. Uh, but just a really, really well-maintained motor. That's uh, exactly the sort of stuff that we look for. Again, being the GLS, you've got the daytime running lights. So as soon as the car's on, these LEDs are on constantly. So they look great, but they're also a safety feature too. So look, hey, um, that Eve, that actually concludes our virtual tour. Thanks so much for watching, and um, I can't wait to hear your feedback.